All right, what's up everybody? So I have a cool video topic for today. These are the 10 lifts that have taken my physique to the next level that have revived my gains and pushed me farther than I ever thought I could go in natural bodybuilding. And by no means am I at my limit, but I'm farther than initially I thought I would get. So I want to put a few pictures up on the screen of my physique a year or so ago, and then my physique now. I'm gonna try and put uh, put some pictures up comparing each muscle group on its own so we can get the most accurate representation. I wanna try and find transformation pictures that are taken in the same lighting, uh, in the same setting, as basically trying to make it as similar as I can so we can get the best gauge of progress. So. To start things off, once you get to a certain point in your lifting career, you can no longer rely on everything working or just luck to make your gains. There's no noob gains, there's no novelty stimulus that just happens once you're at a certain point. So proper programming is going to be key to take your physique to that next level. And beyond that, exercise selection is a subcategory of programming, and I think it's a very important one. So when it comes to exercise selection this involves the exercise you're choosing but i think technique also is kind of factored into that too not something we'll be going over today but i do think technique is important which i talk about very frequently on the channel so the first lift that i have i'm going to start off with the chest is the smith bench the smith bench is something i've relied on heavily and this has been closely correlated with the growth in my chest over the past year or so so if you look at the picture i think it's pretty night and day i think my shoulders have ironically made the most progress but my chest is up there too it's made quite a decent amount of gains the Smith bench is key, and I, I'm a huge fan of this lift because of the stability. It's not a lift that provides that nice stretch that we all know the pecs respond very well to, but it does have that stability, and I think that gives it the edge over a barbell bench press. So I think that stability, the range of motion is somewhat limited because you can't get the full stretch like you could with a machine or dumbbell or a cable, but the stability is great. No other lift can match that, and it lets you grind out reps close to failure and really just get everything activated, which at the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do with lifting. That's what we're trying to do with bodybuilding in particular. So the second lift that I have, moving on to the shoulders, the Smith AD Press. The AD Press itself was popularized by Alex Leonidas, so I have to give him the, the shout out for that one. The Smith, again, same concept for the bench press, just carries over to this overhead press. I would give the slight edge to the Smith machine, but a barbell will still work pretty damn well for this lift. So either way, should be totally fine, whichever one you go with. It's a lift that I'm a huge fan of, and it's something that I just haven't done a whole ton of in my lifting career. I always relied on isolation to build my shoulders, and this lift... Uh, isolates quote unquote the front delts really nicely which i never really trained that heavily outside of just extra extra hitting from chest movement so i'm happy with that and then lift number three this one's going to be key in my opinion because i think if there's one particular muscle group that's made the most improvement over the the course of the past year and a half it's been the side delts in particular and i think the cable side raise is what I owe the credit to here. And the funny part about this is for a while, I wasn't even training shoulders. It's only recently within the past six months or so that I've actually been incorporating a lot more direct shoulder work. So if you look at the side delts, I think it's just, it's a massive difference. It's probably, like I said, the, the most improved area of my physique. And the cable side raises have done a great job of that. So I'm a huge fan of these. I did rely on dumbbell side raises for a while too. I really like both variations. Uh, I don't necessarily have a an entire preference. I'd probably lean towards the cable variation, but the dumbbells worked really well for me for quite a long time. So overall, the shoulders are probably the most, uh, I guess, interesting portion of the physique development. And part of the reason why it's so extreme is because I actually did lose a decent amount of size in my shoulders from not training them directly. So while my shoulders now are the biggest they've ever been, especially the front and the side delts, at this picture where I'm making the comparison, they had been bigger previously. So uh, just to be fully transparent with it, this isn't just building an entire delt from that to from scratch to what it is now. They were bigger. They were probably somewhere in between that picture and where they are now. So I think while they did probably make the most gains compared to any other muscle group, it's not as extreme as that picture's leading it on to be, just so you guys aren't getting entirely confused thinking I doubled my shoulder size in a year or something ridiculous. So uh, up next, moving on to the biceps, I do have to give props to the incline curl. I do think that with the incline curl, the benefits of it that I see all the time in like comments on Instagram and whatever, 
I don't think people... I think the lift can be a little bit overrated at times, especially recently. And I don't think those benefits are as real as we make them out to be. But at the same time, obviously, there's a handful of us that have all been making great gains from the incline curl. And I don't think you can ignore that. I'm not sure how much of a factor any type of weighted stretching plays into bicep growth in particular. I don't know if it's a coincidence that we're all getting big biceps using this lift, but it's worked really well. And regardless of whether it's the stretch benefits or the positioning or the strictness or whatever it is, it's working pretty well and it grew my biceps. So regardless of the reasoning, I am a fan of that lift. Up next, number five, I have the preacher curl. And the preacher curl is something that is probably my favorite bicep lift. It's probably my most en enjoyed lift. I'm not someone that necessarily enjoys lifts for what they are, but I think this lift gives me exactly what I'm looking for out of a curl. And this has gotten me from that 16 and a half, 16 and three quarters mark to just about 17 at that 16.9 inch uh, arm measurement. So this has been my my main bicep movement for the past roughly a month. And it's my arms have grown almost a quarter of an inch, maybe what one fifth of an inch, one sixth of an inch or something. So I know it's a pretty minor measurement difference, but I think in that short period of time, it's saying something and I do train preacher curls pretty hard. I'll probably put a clip up on here, but it's incredibly strict challenges your bicep in the length and position. And you can absolutely grind out reps on here like nothing else so preacher curls are incredible i'm a huge fan of them i would suggest anybody to try them this is probably going to be my bread and butter bicep movement for the foreseeable future so moving on to the back of the upper body the first lift that i have here is for the triceps uh, and i have the smith jm press for my main tricep builder over the past year or so this lift has been a staple in my training and I was using it with a barbell for a while, but for the past six months or so, I have been using it in the Smith machine. So I have done a little bit of both. I really like both variations. I slightly prefer the Smith because of that stability, but the barbell jam press is a great lift too. So each of these lifts has helped me a ton. The lateral head of my triceps has finally grown, like finally. And I'm someone that's done normal bench, normal dips, gotten brutally strong on both of those lifts. And my triceps were always tiny, and weak and you didn't even know that I trained them. So this has been the key, a nice stretch focused compound lift for the triceps are truly the prime mover is finally like the secret to even me growing my triceps, which is my genetic weakness, something that I never trained properly anyways. It's just, it's incredible to finally know that there's a lift out there for me that works and that there's hope. So uh, I couldn't say enough good things about this lift. I've done them a few different ways too. I've done them down to the collarbone, the low to mid neck. I've done them to kind of the chin area, even like the mouth area too. So any variation there, whether it's more of a press or more biasing the extension movement, they all work great. I'm a huge fan of all of them. Uh, and I can't say enough good things about JM press variations for the triceps. Up next, number seven here, I've got the stretch wrist girl. This is for the forearms. I didn't have a good enough picture for the forearms. This is the best I could get. I know it's uh, a little bit of uh, a different pose, but I think you can kind of get the general gist that they've they've grown a little bit. Obviously, with something like forearms, the, the growth is kind of small in proportion to a bigger muscle, so it's not quite as noticeable, but I'm seeing growth there. I don't have the measurements from back in the day, but they do look a little bit bigger, so take with that what you will. Stretched wrist curls have been uh, a key player for me in here. And I haven't even been training forearms directly this entire time. I trained them for a while, but at this point, I have so much other volume in my training that my forearms are just on maintenance and they're an easy muscle to maintain because they get trained indirectly quite a bit. And in my opinion, that's enough to maintain. But you, if you truly do want to grow your forearms, always isolate, always target them. Don't listen to the people that say just rely on the compounds and whatnot. It will not hurt you to do a little bit of isolation work. It barely takes any time, it takes a lot of grinding, but it's not gonna hurt your recovery. It's the laziest excuse in lifting to skip your isolation work 100%. I've been there before and it was a lazy excuse and I stayed small because of it. So don't listen to those people. Up next onto the back. The back is something that I haven't trained with a high enough priority to see major gains, but I do think I'm seeing a decent improvement there. 
the single arm dumbbell row has been the lift that I've basically let take up most of my back training. I use this lift to bias my mid to low uh, traps, even a little bit of the upper traps too, but it's a stretch biased. I am definitely getting a little bit of lat work in there, especially the more I stretch and the more I round my back, the more it turns into like a diagonal pull. So I think my back has come up a little bit, but overall I'm not training my back as a high enough priority to see the growth potential that I think it had in this past year and a half. So moving forwards, I think my back gains will be better. But either way, I think for me to kind of put back on the on the back burner, no pun intended, and still see good growth is credit is basically just credit to how good the single arm dumbbell row is. I'm a huge fan of it. I put it in my top 10 lifts if I had to rebuild my physique video and I absolutely love it. So get a pair of straps, do the single arm, hand on the bench, feel the stretch row and you're good. Your back will blow up, especially if you do more volume and frequency than I did. On to the legs. I don't have old progress pictures of my legs. I have one from earlier this year, back in February, and even at this point when it's a four month change, I'm actually seeing pretty significant gains. Like to me, this picture, obviously it's only four months, but it's on the same mirror in the same spot. And my quads are legitimately bigger. I'm also 13 pounds heavier in the picture on the right, which is obviously the newer picture. And my quads, if anything, look even a tad bit leaner. So I think that's because my legs are my biggest weak spot. They had the most potential. So if I gained half fat and half muscle in my quads, it's still the same body fat percentage locally. So I think that's part of the reason. And obviously, if I gained 13 pounds and it was mostly fat, the body fat percentage would look higher. But I think I genuinely gained at least 50% of that gained weight in my legs as quad muscle. So I'm super happy with that. I think my quads look better. 100% still my weak spot. You guys can chirp me all you want, and I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> all right, so I'm editing the video, putting a bunch of effort into it. Completely forgot to mention hack squats. I don't know how they got removed from my list, but basically hack squats are the lift that I would give the most credit to growing my quads. I would say between that and recently pendulum squats, those are kind of the two meat and potatoes lifts that I'm using to build my quads. The hack squats have definitely been something that's helped even in that short period of time. Smith machine hack squats, pendulum squats as well, and leg press too with a, a moderate and a lower stance. All four slash five of those lifts have been bread and butter for me, something I talked about recently in my How I Grew My Quads video. So uh, I'll let you get back to the final lift of this list. Uh, and the last lift that I have, number 10, the leg press calf raise. I do two lifts for my calves right now, and this is kind of the sweet spot where I'm actually seeing pretty good calf growth. My calves... Uh, just hit 15 inches. They were closer to 14 inches back before I was really training them much. Obviously, I probably got a maybe a tiny little bit of growth from just squatting and deadlifting for so many years. Uh, but in terms of like isolation recently and doing it consistently, I've put on three quarters of an inch in the past few months, which is nothing crazy for just starting uh, to train my calves. So when it comes to this lift, Basically, what I'm doing are these two separate lifts, like I said. The first one is a, just a standing calf raise machine. This is a pretty good lift, and I think it's something that should be used, especially in the situation that I'm in, because the other variation that I do is a leg press calf raise. The caveat with mine is that the leg press is slippery. Like, the grip is slippery, so I can't get into a full extension or my feet just start to slip off the pad. So I can only really do bottom half partial reps for me to actually stay up there, which are working really well. So I do this, uh, not the Smith, but you could you could do it in a Smith too. I have people do that. Uh, a standing calf raise machine to get the full range of motion. I also do length and partials there. And then I'll follow that up with two sets of a leg press calf raise. 99% of you guys could get away with just doing the leg press calf raise if you wanted to, but for my particular situation, the, the thing isn't grippy enough for me to do them full time, unfortunately. So those two lifts have grown my calves finally. And I actually care to grow my calves now. So I think that's a huge reason why they're starting to grow a bit more. So with all that being said, I'll keep the video to that. I would love to hear your top 10 lifts that have built your physique or taken your physique to the next level. I'm always curious to hear it in the comments. So let me know. I will see you guys in the next one.